Filling an object with points using geometry nodes is something we've been able to do for quite a while now, but it was pretty complicated. The distribute points in volume node makes this way, way easier. Let's check it out. For this one, make sure you're using version 3.4, and the build that I have is from September 20th, so if you're using that one or from a later date, then you should be good. So let's get into Blender, and first thing I'm going to do is add in a cube. It can be any mesh you want, basically. Now let's go into Geometry Nodes, select your mesh, and click the New button for a new node tree. And let's search for the new node. It's called Distribute Points in Volume right here. So when we drop it in, it's going to give us an error because we need a volume first. So luckily we have one that's just mesh to volume, and we can use that one. And now you'll notice that there are points just kind of floating in the air right here. And if we turn the density up, it will start to fill our object with points like that. Now we can change this to grid if we want, and it will give us this like 3D grid right here. And like I said, you can use whatever shape you want. So let's just go into edit mode, select everything and delete this. And we can add in something else like a torus, something more complex. So let's preview this node right here. You can see it's pretty low resolution and it's also pushing out past it. That's because we have exterior bandwidth turned up. If we turn that down, it will be more accurate. And we can also turn the voxel amount up or what I prefer to do is use the size. And if we want these to use the same resolution for like the spacing right here, we can just use a value right here to control the voxel size and the spacing. So I'll set this to 0.3, plug it in to both. And now as we turn this down, the resolution should turn up. You gotta be pretty careful because it will crash if you make it super, super small. But as you can see, we have this like voxelized version of this torus right now. Now for really big objects, you might be worried about filling them with points completely. So we do also have this option, fill volume right here. And if we uncheck that, then we're gonna wanna use these two right here. So we can make it so it's just kind of like an outer layer like that. We could even plug this in here, and it should create a very thin layer like that just around the outside. So a setup like this would be really good for if you just want to turn your object into cubes entirely. So we could do that pretty easily with uh, instance on points, and then we can bring in a cube and plug it in to the instance. And we can set the size right here to be the exact same number as the spacing. And if we turn the scale down just slightly, you'll be able to see that this is entirely made of cubes now. This even works for like animated characters too. Can turn this up a little higher and it performs really well. Like this is playing in real time right now without any frames being dropped. Something more useful might be like a shrub generator. Um, so I just made this leaf model right here and you can just drag it in from the outliner, plug the geometry into the instance like that. And we're gonna wanna make the scale quite a bit smaller like this and we can randomize the rotation. So I'll drag this out, search for a random value node like this. And to randomize it completely, we can set this to tau, T-A-U. We can give the leaf a nice texture. And now just like before, we can make a shrub that is any shape we want. This would probably be really good for like hedge mazes. Now the thing that I was most excited about using this for is actually making clouds. So let's just turn this up a little bit more and we're going to have it fill the volume like that. And I'll also set both of these to zero. One thing that's nice about working with points like this is we actually have another node that's called points to volume and we can drop that in here. I'll also set this to size and we can use the same voxel size that we're using for everything else. To make the cloud look fluffier, we can take all of these points and move them around a little. You can also just set it to random if you want like this, but I prefer to use grid and a set position node like this. And we can use a noise texture, take the color and subtract that by 0.5. And then use a vector math node set to multiply to control the strength. So we can plug all of this into the offset of the set position. And now when we take a look at it and start turning this up, you can see they start floating around. The reason I like to do this is because this allows you to change it just on one axis if you like. So you could make something that is much more fluffy going off to the side like this, but I'll just set all of these to one for now. Also for this to look good in render mode like this, you're gonna wanna add a light so that you can actually see it. We could also add our own material with a set material node and we need to add one. So just create a new one. I'll name this clouds and we can set it right over here. Now, instead of this using surface, we can come in here, remove that and add one to the volume right here. 
and I just want to add a principled volume and I'll make the color completely white like that. So Eevee is going to make this look kind of bad if we actually have a material set here. It's just a weird thing about Eevee. So you can remove it, but we already have it set right here, so it should be fine. For it to look good in Eevee, you want to change some of the volumetric settings over here. We can turn on volumetric shadows, and if you want it to be the highest quality possible, you turn the tile size down to 2 pixels. I'll set mine to 4 just for performance, and we can turn the samples up pretty high also. Now if we set our voxel size over here to something quite a bit lower, like 0 0.02, Blender will crash, then this will actually look pretty nice in here. But let's not stop there because we can also change the radius. I'll use the noise texture to control the radius too, so we can just plug that straight in like that. But it might make the radius too big, so we can use a map range node. And you can just change the 2 min and the 2 max to set the minimum and maximum radius size. So I'll set the maximum to maybe something like 0.3. And turn the density up just a little bit so we get that nice shadow. This also works really well with cycles. You can get some pretty cool results if you change the spacing of this independently. So you don't need to work with nearly as many points. Like this would be pretty good for something like stylized clouds like that. But I think the more points you have in here, the more realistic it'll end up looking. One other quick tip so you don't have to keep changing the voxel size right here. And we can add different settings for what you see in the viewport and what you see when it renders. It's pretty easy. You just need a switch node. Make sure that you have this set to float. And another node called is viewport right here and plug this into the switch. I'll set both of these to 0.1 for now and we can plug it in. And now the true value right here is going to be what you see in the viewport and the false value is what you'll see when it renders. So we can change the false to something small like 0.01 and right now it looks the same in the viewport but as soon as we hit render you'll notice that it's much higher quality. So you can make whatever cloud shapes you want. You can either model this the way you normally would with just extruding or if you want you could just keep duplicating cubes, which is also a lot of fun to do. So I think this node opens up a ton of possibilities. What else do you think it would be good for? If you want the file I made in this video or any of my other ones, you can get them on Patreon along with early access videos and coupon codes for free products. I also donate a portion of the profits to environmental causes each month. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.